was that woman? Why are you showing me this? Is she, is she my mother? Hello everybody and welcome back to Beyond Two Souls. I left you all off on the cliffhanger that Jody might be dead, but as we can see here, she's not. She's alive and I'm assuming mostly well, although it looks like she's in a hospital of some sort. I also thought that this was its own chapter, but believe it or not, this is still the homeless chapter. So this is actually broken down into three parts. The last video is getting pretty long. Well, it looks like we're able to get up and walk, so let's go and have a look around, shall we? You got the job. Went to this small apartment. Um, I don't know, okay. I miss you, Jody. I really miss you. I have no idea how long we've been in a coma for, but it looks like our friends have been coming to visit and have been keeping us company, which is a good thing. And it sounds like Stan is doing well. Got himself a job. He's no longer homeless. So's Jody. The guys. This way. We'll always be here. <laughs> And Jimmy came to visit us. He doesn't say it in that scene, but he cleaned himself up and he's sober and he's no longer homeless as well. Bastards got picked up the night they set fire to a building. Gasoline on their clothes gave them away. You believe that? Assholes. Well, they got their just desserts for trying to kill an entire group of people and almost killing Jody by beating her. Anything else we can look at? I wonder if Walter or Tuesday came to visit us at all. Oh, there she is. There's Tuesday and her baby. Sylvia's so three months old today. I often tell her about you so that she knows what you did for her. Oh, and I started using my real name again. It's Eliza. It looks like all of our pals are doing well. I can't say the same for Jody, unfortunately. We gotta find a way to get out of here. Kind of a nice hospital room, I guess. But that doesn't really help us. CIA. This girl is wanted for treason, so we have an arrest warrant if that's what you need. Okay. I'll take you to her. 
Okay, yeah, now we really need to get out of here. The only place I can think of to get out of here is the window. There really is no other way, because they're coming down the only hallway. Now, Aiden is still obviously with us. She was just talking to him at the beginning of this chapter. I hope that he can swoop in here and help us save the day. So, where is she? That's weird. This is a room. She should be here. Shit. She went out the window. Oh, that's impossible. We're on the fifth floor. She couldn't go out the window. Call it in. That girl cannot get away. And then, of course, here we see Jody walking down the road. And this segues into the chapter we saw at the very, very beginning of the game. Ma'am? Is everything all right? Ma'am? Please don't leave me here. Just for a couple of days. You'll see. Time will go by fast. Susan, we need to go. There's no reason to drag this out. You're right, darling. You're strong. I know you're strong. It's hard leaving your home and your family. But here we have a better chance of understanding what's happening. We can find a way to protect you. Nobody can protect me. Your belongings are in that bag over there. Cole and I are right next door. If you need anything or if anything's wrong, just call and we'll come right away. Okay. Good night, Jody. So now we're segueing into the first night that Jody spends at the laboratory and chronologically I think that this chapter takes place right after my imaginary friend which was the chapter where Jody had spent the night at home and she had gotten attacked and her parents were discussing uh, possibly taking her somewhere else all right find somewhere to change it looks like they followed up on those plans and at this point, her powers are probably starting to get a little bit out of control, as we had previously seen. Hope they haven't put cameras in here, too. I certainly hope not. You gotta have some sense of privacy. If you look around, you can see that there are cameras absolutely everywhere, just so that they can monitor her activity and I think there's always somebody kind of watching her just to make sure that everything is going okay. I'm assuming that she could probably be attacked at any given time. Come on, Bunny Griff. Let's see where we're going to sleep tonight. We couldn't leave home without Bunny Griff. It's one of Jody's most prized possessions. Off to bed now, Jody.
I do hope that the scientists will be able to help us. I don't know that they can, but it's worth a shot. I'm gonna turn off the light now. Good night, Jody. Wait. Can you leave the light on in the hall? I, I don't like it when it's dark. Sure. How's that? Good. Good night. Night. Don't be afraid, Eddie. We're gonna have a good night's sleep and nothing is gonna happen. We have to do a couple of things here to try and help Joey fall asleep. Probably not easy just to settle right into this new environment right away. I can't sleep, Aiden. I think I need a story. That's really cool. Of course, he can't speak to her, but he can kind of tell her a story using the light, which is kind of neat. And that seems to have helped. And so far, all is good. It's quiet. She's sleeping. People are watching us to make sure everything is good. Hopefully this is going to turn out all right. Although, now that I look at this, I think those lights are flickering. Which, uh, may be kind of worrisome. Unless you have an electrical problem. Let's go see if anyone's keeping an eye out. Uh, Cole's here, but he's not exactly watching. Uh-oh. Okay, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Oh, Jody, hold on. We have to try and wake Cole up so that he can maybe do something. Look, shit's going crazy, dude. Shit's popping. Help us. So after you've woken Cole up, you can now protect Jody against the entities. And just like in the condenser, protecting her goes towards the trophy that you get at the end of the game for completing all of these entity fight scenes. So this will just go on for a little while while we wait for some help to arrive, which is hopefully going to be soon because Jody's getting tossed around like a little rag doll. She wasn't lying when she said nobody could protect her. Those things came out of nowhere for no good reason. I said no. End of story. Please, Nathan, just this once. All the other girls in my class are going, and I won't be late. I promise, okay? You're wasting your breath, Jody. It's just not fair. How come everyone can go and I can't? I do everything you ask of me all week, and I never get to have any fun! For the hundredth time, you're not like everyone else, and there are rules. Well, I didn't ask to be different. I just want to go out and, and have friends and be like other girls my age. You'll never be like them. You need to get used to that. Good night.
I'll be next door. Let me know if you need anything. All right, so we segue right into the next chapter, which is titled Like Other Girls. And we can see here that teenage Jody is going through a bit of a phase. She's drastically changed her appearance, and she's a tad bit upset that she's not allowed to leave the base and have friends and do things that normal teenagers are allowed to do. It's Saturday night, and I'm locked up in here! What? I just want to go out and have some fun! I can't do it, babe. Rules are rules. Cole, please, please let me out just this once. Why do you have to tell Nathan everything? I'm sorry, princess. I can't. It's not my call. Ah, uh, I'm sure Cole would love to take her out and just, you know, do something. Even if he could go out with her supervised or something, he really cares about Jody, I think, and uh, he does feel bad that she can't go out and do things, but obviously because of the nature of her abilities, she can't just go out and do what she wants. Well, we have to devise some sort of plan to be able to get out of here because Jody's gonna bend the rules a little bit. So if you switch to Aiden, you can begin trashing the place. Just do some destruction to let the rage out a little bit. I'm sure that all of our broken stuff will be fixed. It's fine. And once you've done that, you realize it's not gonna do you any good. Stop it, Aiden. They don't give a shit if we break everything in this goddamn room. Well, that's not gonna work. We have to figure out what will. And so, we'll hear the phone ring, which will mean that Cole is yeah. preoccupied at the moment, and because he's preoccupied, we can possess him, and using Cole, we're just gonna let ourselves out. Probably kind of a dirty way to go about doing it, but Jody is really determined to go out. I'm really sorry, Cole. I hate myself for doing this, but... You understand, right? I just... I need to go out tonight. So we're gonna get Cole to follow us, and hopefully, if anybody sees us, they'll see him as well, and they won't automatically send us back to our rooms. Yeah, it's too late to turn back now. Looks like the front door is right there, though. And so far, so good. I don't see anybody. Luckily, it is rather late at night, so the laboratory isn't as uh, bustling and as busy as it normally would be. Locked. Of course it is. I'll just use your card key. Thank you. We've done the easy part, and we're out the front door, but we're not out of the woods yet. In order to get farther, there's a couple of obstacles that we're going to have to pass. And there is a likelihood that you will get caught and you will be sent back to your room. Well, hello, Cole. Jody. Bit late for a day trip, isn't it? 
Cole was just um, taking me to see the shooting stars. A apparently there's like tons up there tonight. Have you seen them yet? Listen, I don't know if Professor Dawkins would be all right with you going outside in the middle of the night. Please. I mean, it's only gonna be like a few minutes and Cole is with me. I, I, I've never seen the shooting star. All right, go ahead. I'll pretend I never saw it. What's up, Cole? Okay, got so that's going. usually the mm -hmm. fail-proof excuse that I use to get past the guard right away. But unfortunately, if you don't uh, attempt to get Cole to speak he lost, here, he lost his voice. you'll be sent back. I think it's like a, a virus or something. I, that's more than, that's more than I've gotten out of them all, all day long, so. Well, it's not contagious, buddy. You should be home in bed if you ask me. Safer for all of us. God. The guard will touch Cole's shoulder and Aiden will lose control. Cole will Go regain on. consciousness and the chapter will end prematurely. That is an option. There's not really any ramifications for that, except for that you don't get to see the rest of the chapter. Well, at least we don't have to look for Cole's car. There's cameras everywhere. Better not hang around here too long. So step two, of course, is to find a way to get to where we need to go. Get in the car and start it up. We're gonna let Cole take the wheel here and drive. Obviously, probably would look suspicious if Jody was driving Cole's car. And I made this mistake my first time. I got in the back seat, but that's a bad idea because you'll be seen. So if you want to make an escape without being seen, you can get into the trunk of Cole's car. It's not the most glamorous escape, but, but it'll do. Let's go, Aiden. So if you're sitting in the back seat, obviously the guard will see you and you'll be busted and you'll be sent back. Which was really stupid. I got busted my first time and I felt like an asshole. I thought, why didn't I think of that in the first place? Make sure Jody's okay. We'll let her out of the trunk here. All right. You'll forgive me, right? We're free. I'll be back soon. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Okay, Aiden. Take him into the forest. Make sure he's safe. So we're gonna get Cole a little bit lost just to get him off of Jody's tail a little bit here while Jody goes and has a little bit of fun. Kind of a odd place for her to be, I would think, in the middle of the night. Kind of seems like an abandoned road in the middle of nowhere, but hopefully she knows what she's doing. This is the place. The girls must be inside already. Oh, you're going to a bar, and I'm pretty sure you're underage. Well, I would have to say that this is probably a really, really, really bad idea, but hey. Ah, uh, all right. I don't see your friends. 
anywhere, Jody. We'll wait. How old are you, Miss? I'm 29. I just want to learn Yeah, that's not suspicious or anything. But this kind of seems like a seedy place. Bartender doesn't really seem like he's asking too many questions, which could be a very good or a very bad thing. You have a couple of different options now once you get to the bar. I'm gonna take the easy way out, and I'm gonna kind of end the chapter prematurely. I do also want to give a bit of a trigger warning, because I know that some of the themes of this game are rather dark. If you play this chapter a little bit uh, further into it, there is a chance that Jody can get assaulted with an attempted rape. So I just want to point that out to anybody who might be playing, who might be distressed by that kind of thing. And the reason that I'm not going to be playing uh, that part of this chapter is because it messes with an outcome in a later chapter, and I will talk a little bit about that later. So you have the option to play pool with some of the bar patrons. That will escalate into Jody getting herself into a little bit of trouble. Your friends are not going to show up. So the only other option that you have is to leave the bar before things get Harry, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, we went all this way, we snuck out, and there really didn't seem to be much point in doing so because our friends kind of abandoned us. Excuse me? Did some girls come in here earlier? I'm, I'm supposed to meet them. No. I ain't seen nobody like that. Thanks. Well, that pretty much settles it. This place gives me a very, very bad feeling. Before we leave though, I just want to point out that if you do play pool with the men and go through with that whole scene of events, there is a trophy associated with it as well. So if you're going for your platinum trophy, you can do that now, or you can play through the game and replay the chapter later on for the trophy. It's completely up to you. Let's get out of here, Jody. You went through all of that trouble, and I don't think it was really worth it. But worth it to get out of here before you get yourself into any trouble. to tell you this, Jody, so I'm just going to tell you. Your mom and I, we've been transferred. We have to leave the base. We really want to take you with us, but we think... Everyone thinks that it would be better for you to stay here with Professor Dawkins. Oh. I see how it is. You're completely abandoning me and leaving me here. Of course, we'll come to see you whenever it's possible. When you're better, you'll join us in our new home. Okay? You are a fucking liar. You just want nothing to do with me. Well, I think it's for the best. Which is so cruel to do to a child. Goodbye, dear. Although, judging by the fact that you're a total asshole, maybe it is better to leave me here with Dawkins and Cole. I feel bad for our mom, though. She seems to really genuinely love us very much. Be brave, darling. I know this is difficult. I'm sure it'll work out for you. Oh, yeah, we gotta go. Susan. Just give me a minute, Philip. I think your father somehow talked your mom into leaving you here. 
That's enough. Come on. And abandoning you. I don't know how he managed to do that, but that's rather unfortunate that he has so much power like that. And here we get the option with Aiden to take a little bit of revenge on our father and to choke him. And you also have the option of not choking him as well. If you don't feel like taking your revenge on him. Choking him was worth a trophy and not choking him was worth a trophy as well. I'll always be here. And that's an extremely short chapter, so I wanted to fit that in at the very end. And this next chapter we're going into is very, very long once again. So I'm going to cut it off here, and next time we will pick up with the chapter Navajo. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I hope that I will see you next time.